Hey everyone, welcome. In this video, I'm going to unbox my new Fluke, what is this, Pro 3000 Analog Tone and Probe Kit. So for those of you who may be new to this industry, you're not familiar with what this is, a tone and probe is an essential tool of any telecom or network technician that has to deal with uh, structured cabling. In fact, actually, even if you don't work with structured cabling, if you just have to help yourself identify cables sometimes this can be really handy so here's what i'm gonna do i'm gonna cut up in the plastic and then i will unbox this for you and show you what's all inside this thing well this sucker is tough there we go another good use for your lineman snips right there okay almost done okay so finally got that cut open if you ever have to deal with these kind of things too in the future be sure you're careful because these edges are super sharp i can't imagine there aren't several people who have to go to the emergency room every year or month because of opening these kinds of plastic containers all right so let's see what's inside this guy well i thought i had it cut open all the way maybe not All right, here we go. All right, well, let's see. We've got some literature on the back here. Ooh, look at this. A nice holding pouch. Do you think I'll really use that? Eh, I don't know. It's kind of bulky. Anybody who's done this for a while knows that bulk is not your friend, that you have so many things you have to worry about that carrying around extra stuff or bulky packaging is doesn't work well. All right, here's what I came after. So this right here is called the toner. It is a thing that generates a signal, the noise. Um, it's done by injecting a uh, radio frequency noise onto the metal conductors you're trying to find. And then this thing right here is the tone probe. So they work together. What happens is you put this on a line somewhere, usually like a wall jack, like a phone jack or a network jack. And you can use it sometimes on live. I'm not going to go into the details about when it's okay to use it on live circuits versus, you know, uh, wires that are dead. Um, but you, there are situations where you can use it on live circuits. And then this is the toner. So this goes in the jack, and then this is what you listen with. Now, before I can show you how these work, i got to put some batteries in it. Both of these will require 9-volt batteries. So I'm going to put a 9-volt battery in here. I'll take that screw off right there and put the 9-volt battery in there. And then also back here, i got to take that screw off and put a 9-volt battery in there. So I'll be right back in a moment after I do that so I can show you how this works. Just take a second to show you how putting the batteries goes. So like I said, the, the toner and the tone pro both have little compartments for the batteries. You gotta take the screws out. They're both gonna use nine volt batteries. Okay, oh, look at that. A little extra tip in there. Well, that's cool. Didn't see that coming. Well, it looks exactly like that one. I wonder whether there's a difference or if that's just a replacement. One of the things I've, I've known about these, though, that I've had these before, is this little piece tends to get broken off if you don't take it off when you store it because just the nature of your tool bag. I mean, if you have a hard, rigid briefcase type tool bag, then you're probably fine. I use a backpack, and what I find happens is with this in is that the, the leaning pressure that happens from, you know, uh, from the outside tends to break that off so I found it works best if you take that off and put that it looks like because you could carry it in there but that's not really efficient for time's sake but anyway all right so let's finish putting the battery in there so put the battery in there put that back on there I'll do that in a second um, the tone probe also battery in here so I'll put that in there get these buttoned back up and I'll show you how this works Okay, we're back. I got my batteries installed. So the way this works is, and you know, toners all have the same general operating premise, uh, you know, if you have a different brand or something like that, is they've either got a continuity mode and a tone mode. And what happens is in continuity, it kind of acts a little bit like, almost like a like an ohm uh, meter. Like if you're trying to see if, if something is shorted or if something is a full connectivity round trip, is that when you put the two together, you get the light. 
that tells you that, that there's connectivity all the way through. All right. Um, but more often use it as a toner, and there's a little switch position for that. So that side's t continuity. This side is tone. And in the tone mode, now this is interesting because on the older ones, usually when you flipped it to tone, it would start making tone right away. But apparently now on the new ones, now you actually have to push this little button to select either a solid straight tone or you have to push it again for alternating tone. Okay, so what's happening is this is making a radio frequency sound. It's making, it's using radio frequency to make a sound and this instrument right here is picking up on that radio frequency sound. It comes out of the speaker. So this is almost like an amplifier. This is what's making the noise. The neat part is you don't actually have to touch the metal to get the noise. Almost like a proximity meter a little bit. All right. Now when you do touch it, it gets really loud. All right. Another interesting thing about a toner, a toner is, is that when, when the tone leads are crossed or there's, a, there's like a short in the circuit, you lose the tone. The tone goes away. All right. Ah, now that's cool. By clipping the two together, I can get multiple tones. Isn't that neat? Look at that. What happens if I do it again? Let's see if I can get another tone. Haha, -ha, that's pretty cool. Of course, this stuff is probably out, outlined in the documentation. Ooh, the Space Invaders, if I had bothered to read it. Anyway, so that's a toner. So for those of you who are not familiar with how this works, I'll actually do a quick little mock-up demonstration. I don't have like a full cabling infrastructure in my home office slash studio to show you, but I will give you a quick little example here next. Okay, so pretend with me, if you will, that this is a wall jack and that you may or may not have labels on your wall jacks, but let's pretend that for some reason we, we didn't know where the other end of this cable was. So what we can do is we can take the little RJ11 uh, end of the toner and plug it into the jack and make sure it's turned on and flashing. And then what we do, and I recommend doing this before you walk back to the other end of where you think this cable is, is just do a quick check to make sure it's making noise. And then let's pretend that we walk to the data room. Now, in reality, this jack and my patch panel are pretty close to each other. But, but imagine that we walk back to the data room and we're like, oh, okay, we're trying to find the tone. Let's see. Oh, here it is. And data port one on the patch panel. Now this could be a patch panel, a 66 block, a 110 block. The point is, is that we're using that radio frequency generated by the toner as a homing beacon for the tone probe to try to find. Okay, so I can check here, check here, I don't hear it. I get closer, there it is. One, um, patch panels are kind of a bad example because you have to get really close to them to actually find them. When you're working with 66 blocks or 110 blocks, it's a little bit easier because uh, you can kind of just wave the, the wand back and forth and, and it kind of tells you, you know, you get further away, it gets softer, you get closer, it gets louder, and that's how you, how you find your, your cable. All right, so hope you found that interesting or helpful. Thanks so much for watching.